You announced 10. That was very brave of you. <laughs> That's it. I made a promise that this would be no longer than 10 minutes. And yet, there is a forlorn hope already in the audience. I promise you. Haven't the children done very well tonight? They have. The adults maybe not so well, but the children did really well. What we did really was he did it deliberately to make the children look even better tonight. And I think that the men have taken a hit tonight, and I appreciate that, boys. You've done that clearly on purpose. <laughs> and for those of you that feel that you've aged horribly tonight over this period of time, I promise you, you've only been here an hour. So <laughs> in case you're wondering. Okay. Let's just pray for a moment. Now I just want to bring a short Christmas message to you, since it's Christmas, and you're in my church, and so I can. And then after that, we have, in fact, this is Leftovers Night. We've had a lot of parties. Was that a whoop then? This is Leftovers Night. We have lots and lots of cakes left over from all the various parties we've had this week. So you may come and enjoy them. Potentially, there may even be trifle, but I don't want to make any promises. So we'll see how we go. But let's just pray. Lord, I thank you that we're found here, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless these words to us now. Let them be yours and not mine, I pray. In your mighty name, Father. Amen. Amen. I, uh, we've had two Christmas carol services here as a church. So if you were here last week, you're veterans already of what we do here as a church. So we wanted to have one which was a bit more serious and one which was light-hearted. I'm not entirely sure if you can guess which one was which. Hopefully tonight was the light-hearted one. I think it's always nice to be reminded as they say, of the real reason for Christmas. Uh, and it's always nice to have a, a nativity to go to one. So I don't know whether you've been dragged along to a school nativity already this year. If not, well, we've saved you that honor so that you've now done the nativity this year. You can wear your badge of honor with you. And I'm sure you often hear Christians say to you, they want to put Christ back into Christmas and stop all of this Xmas nonsense that gets about in these shops that they write an Xmas sale or Xmas is coming on. We go, put Christ back into it. Take away that X and put Christ back in. But yesterday, we had a Christmas meal here as a church and we did a quiz. And the church was surprised to find out, and you might be surprised to find out, that the word Xmas actually came from the church itself. It's from the Greek church, because the first letter of the Greek alphabet is an X. And the last letter in the Greek alphabet is a P. And it used to be X, P, mass, meaning the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Christ, that's one of his names, the beginning and the end, Christ, mass. And they just dropped the P. So you might be surprised to know that Xmas is also a Christian title that was given to Christmas. So that's something that a lot of people are quite surprised about. They just drop the P over time. So Xmas, the word Xmas, doesn't actually deny Christ at Christmas. It's just not very clear that it's actually about Christ at all. In fact, that's the problem most of the time. You may get Jesus in the background about Christmas. Maybe you've had a couple of Christmas carol cards that looked just like the scene we did there. Maybe you've got a nativity up as one of your decorations when you've put all of the little statues out somewhere on your mantelpiece and you've got them all there and your angel and you've put him back and he's come out this time and his wings hanging off and you've had to get the super glue out and make sure that the wings stuck back on and you've got it there. Most people have got that. It's just he's in the background and sometimes he's not there all the time. And the thing about celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ is that most people know that before we started celebrating Christmas as the birth of Jesus Christ, well, it was a Christmas festival long before then. It used to be the festival that celebrated Saturn and Saturnus. So it used to be the festival of Saturn. And that's uh, what it was instead. Before Christmas, until the Roman Caesar, Constantine, Christianized all of the pagan festivals so that Saturnus became Christmas. But that didn't happen until the 4th century. That's 400 years after the event ever happened. And you might be surprised to learn that early Christians for the first 400 years didn't even celebrate the birth of Jesus. They didn't have a Christmas. They didn't even think about the birth of Jesus so much 
So that's 400 years gap. It would be like me saying this November in 2014, it is 2014 next year, you haven't missed the year. 2014, when we get there, I said to you at November the 5th, why don't we celebrate this event that happened 400 years ago where this crazy terrorist tried to blow up Parliament and he got caught and his name was Guy Spoons or something like that. And it was some kind of cutlery. That was his name. And why don't we celebrate it? We'll call it Fireworks. It seems crazy, doesn't it? Of course, we celebrated Guy Fawkes every year. And we celebrate it. So for the first 400 years, the church didn't even celebrate Christmas. That might surprise you even more. So the church didn't have Jesus at the forefront of Christmas at the beginning. You see, there's no command or law or word in the scriptures that requires the church to celebrate the birth of the Savior. The Gospels, which aren't biographies, they're not biographies that list all of the acts of Jesus so that you might understand. They're things that give the details and highlights to important points. And they are very light on the details of the nativity. And much of what we think we know about it is probably come from the primary schools. It's come from primary school teachers that really want to be actors or directors. And so they come up with a lot. And so you may have sowed this year your first sea, sea lion that was ready at the birth of Jesus, or you had to do a horse or something like that that wasn't there. You had to get your children ready in some kind of costume for their nativity and put those things together. But the, it's very light on the information. The Bible gives us the important points in the nativity to highlight a number of very important things about Jesus. And that's the reason that we actually have a very light nativity in the Scriptures. That he was born to Mary, a descendant of David, is one of the things. The reason they do that is to tell us that he was legally a descendant of King David. Therefore, he was legally an heir to the throne of David. Something that he was promised in the Old Testament. That he was born in Bethlehem meant he fulfilled the promise that the Lord had made many thousands of years ago. That the saviour of all mankind, Emmanuel, would be born in Bethlehem. Hence, we know about that. That he was born of a virgin, highlighted that he could be none other than the Son of God. That the first to come and see him were shepherds who came from a tower where the sheep were used only for the sacrificial offerings in the temple, taught us that he would become a sin offering for us all. That he was visited by wise men from non-Jewish nations who came to worship him as a king, showed he was the king of all the world. And that they brought three gifts, gold signifying his divinity, frankincense signifying the worship of the Lord, and myrrh that he was anointed for burial, and the presence of angels throughout. And the name angel means messenger from God. That the whole thing was a message from God. You see, we make Christmas and the nativity into such a big thing. And we have lots of things and now people have named and they say that there was three wise men and there was this and that happened and these people were there and there was five sea cows and all of these different things that were all available at the nativity scene. But the Bible's really light. And it just gives us the most important points that we understand who Jesus really was. So I wonder if you've got a nativity up in your house in about two weeks, maybe less. You'll have it back in the box. It'll be put back in the, the loft or the cupboard where all the Christmas decorations live. And it won't come out again for another 50 weeks unless you're one of those who puts their decorations up in October. <laughs> or early November. There are plenty of people who do. But you've got them boxed up. I'm not like other Christians who may hammer the point that Jesus is the reason for the season of Christmas. Because when you drill down, Jesus wasn't the reason for this season. Yes, I still celebrate it. And I think it's good that we've done a nativity today. No matter how light-hearted it is. Because Jesus is the Lord of all the seasons. And this, the nativity and the information that the scriptures give us highlights that Jesus is the king of all. Not just the king of some. The saviour to all who accept him. The son of God. Divine. 
sublime, and willingly paid the price for you and for me. That's the message of the season. That's the message of the nativity. Not that baby Jesus is just for Christmas, but that it is for all of the seasons and for all of these. And that leaves us with a dilemma. Instead of looking at the little baby Jesus who we see as cute and adorable, we're confronted with a message that the church has always celebrated and has always taught. And that's this very famous verse, John 3, 16. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that none should perish, but that all may have eternal life. Because the real message of that baby, meek and mild, found in a stable, in the most humble surroundings as he was born, because he was anointed for burial. He was born to die. He was born to come and pay the price for our sins. And so we might look at the baby and forget the rest, but it's important that we see the rest. And that's what the church celebrates above all things. The nativity points to the wonderful nature of God who sent his only son, his only begotten son, that none should perish, but that all might have eternal life. So I wonder what you'll do with that Christmas present this year. Jesus isn't just the reason for this season. He's the reason for your existence. And the challenge, I think, is will you follow him? Let's just pray. Lord, we thank you because of who you are. We thank you, Father, because you sent your son to die for us, to pay the price of sin. And so, Lord, we pray, pray that this Christmas we remember these things. In your mighty name, Father. Amen.